Amen. So this this Advent, we're going on the preparing of the Royal Highway. Week one was highway under construction. Last week was GPS. And tonight is standing at the crossroads, which I think is interesting because it's all based on that one little line out of Jeremiah 16, right? 616. Stand at the crossroads and look and ask for the ancient paths where the good way lies and walk in it and find rest for your souls. And then we get this great story of Zechariah, right? Who draws the short straw. It actually doesn't say that, but it says that he was, it was his turn, right? By lot. He was chosen by lot according to the custom of the time of who would be chosen to go into the innermost sanctuary and light incense and give an offering to God. And as he's in the inner sanctuary giving his offering to God, who comes? Gabriel. But he doesn't say that, right? He doesn't say that at first, right? When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified. And then appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. So if this is the altar, Gabriel is standing over here. And as Zechariah is behind trying to light this incense, he sees this being. And the being says to him, what do angels always say? Do not be afraid. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife will bear a son and you will name him John. And you will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, right? Because Jesus said last Sunday that those born amongst women, no one is greater than John. But he must not drink wine or strong drink. And even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he will do many great things. And Zechariah sees this. And Zechariah hears this. How many of you wish that you would have an angel come <laughs> and stand before you and say, This is what's going to happen. I saw a couple hands. How many of you would want that? How many of you, if this angel came and stood amongst you, would go, well, how am I going to know that this is actually going to happen? I mean, it's not enough that Zechariah is in the innermost part of the temple, right? I should have brought a drawing of the temple for you tonight. But the part of the temple that Zechariah is in is the is the outer courts of the of where the Holy of Holies is, meaning the curtain behind which God, they thought God resided. This is the, the part right outside of that. And only the priests were allowed into this part, right? There's a, there's a section where God is. There's a section right outside of that that's curtained off that only the priests are allowed to go into. There's a section outside of that that only the Levites are probably allowed to go into, if I'm remembering correctly. There's a section outside of that. You can correct me if I'm wrong on this. It's either the Levites or the men. And then there's a court for men. And then there's the outer court, which the women were allowed into. And then there's the outside of the temple itself, where non-Jews were allowed to gather in the, in the courts of the temple. So this is like the part of the temple where only those who are selected by God to be his priests can go into. So there's no way that anybody's going to sneak in here. So why would you not know that that was an angel? Maybe there was some interesting stuff going on with his incense that night too. I don't know. <laughs> Thought he was seeing visions. He didn't know what was going on. But he was at that point where he and his wife were both too old to have children, right? Mm -hmm. They were up in years. How old were they? That's a good question. Yeah, they were, they were your and Nancy's age. That's right. There you go. So, could you imagine Clyde, an angel, coming to you and saying... 
Nancy's going to bear a child, and you will name him John. See, what would you say? You'd be like, no way this is happening, right? How am I going to know? How, is, how am I going to know? I'd argue the name. <laughs> but he asks. And so the angel says, well, I am Gabriel, one of God's archangels who stands in the presence of God daily. And since you didn't believe me, now you won't be able to talk. We didn't get the rest of the story, but if you read through the rest of Luke chapter 1, which would actually be good for this season, because Luke chapter 2 you'll get on Christmas Eve. But Luke chapter 1, the rest of Luke chapter 1, we get Mary singing the Magnificat. We get the angel Gabriel coming again to Mary to tell her that she is blessed among women and that she will bear Christ. We get the birth of John the Baptist where Zechariah is now able to speak after the birth and says that his name will be John, which is not a family name. Which leads us to Joseph and Mary taking a trip to go to Bethlehem to be registered where our Savior is born. They're standing at crossroads like most of us do almost every day of our life. And as I read this passage and I read the, the sheet that talked about what the theme for the evening is, the first thing that came to mind is Robert Frost. What? <laughs> Let's say it a little bit louder so the people in the back corner can hear you. And so the people that are listening now online can hear you. Oh, come on. You just stood up here and read for us. You can't say that. Loud. Right? Robert Frost. The two roads diverge in a yellow wood and I couldn't travel both. But I chose the one less traveled. Right? He came, he's walking in the woods and he comes to the, to the fork in the road. To the fork in the path. And he has two choices, right? Who said that? How many choices does he have? He has three choices. Because here I am standing at the roads. I can go this way, I can go that way. I can go back the way that I came. What am I going to do? Last week we read the story of Joseph who was visited by an angel who had, in a dream, who had the choice of divorcing his wife silently or doing what he should have done and had her stoned to death or listening to the angel, right? He had three choices. All of us have those choices in our life. What are we going to do? Which path are we going to choose? It'd be nice if we had an angel come and tell us which path to take. But even then, we may not get it. So we think that that would be the best thing to happen. But in reality, it may not be. So how do we move forward in looking and waiting for God to come to us? How do we look forward and wait for Emmanuel, a baby who comes to us in a manger, who goes to a cross to die for each and every one of us so that we can have that path to go to God. But how do we know we follow that path? How can you know you're following that path? 